السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا للصلاة هيا للصلاة هيا للفلاة هيا للفلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمد تعالى ونستعين ونستغفره ونعود بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو محتد ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا واتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تمتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد فان الاستق الحديث كتاب الله وخيرا هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم والشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله واهلها في النار وعياذا بالله من واياكم من النار may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the hell fire amin ya rabbil alamin usikum wa nafsi bi taqullah azza wa jal I advise myself first and then my brothers and sisters in Islam with fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we stated on countless occasions, taqullah azza wa jal. That means adhering to the commandments of Allah and staying away from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. Rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahmatan innaka antal wahhab. O oh Allah please keep our hearts firm Rabbana la tuzigh qulubana don't allow for our hearts to go astray after you have guided us to this beauty of Islam innaka antal wahhab 
I love all of you for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed for us to come here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Him, tabarak wa ta'ala, and united our hearts. Because many of us, walillah alhamd, have Muslim parents and Muslim family. And are blessed with that blessing. But some of us came to Islam. We left kufr to come to tawheed. To Iman. And to the brotherhood of Islam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with. That we're brothers. Regardless of our nation and tribe. Regardless of our dialect and our tongue. Regardless of our color. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared us as brothers. And that us who came to Islam. When we come to the gathering of the believers. You are our family. Possibly for some of us, the only family we have is you. When we see you on the street, we give you salams. That's out of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Verily the believers are brothers. We're brothers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us brothers. And... From one of the characteristics of brotherhood is that we give advice to one another. And that we advise one another and have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that advice. And that's why the Prophet alayhi afdal salatu wa salam said in Sahih Muslim, Ad-deen nusiha Kulna liman Qala lillahi وَلِي كِتَابِهِ وَلِي رُسُولِهِ وَلِي أَئِمَّةُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَعَمَّتِهِمْ The Prophet Ali after the Salatu Wasalam said, The religion is sincerity or the religion is advice. And the Sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين said, To who? He said, To Allah and to His book and to His messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and to the imams of the Muslims, meaning the leaders, and the general Muslims. So how do we give advice or have sincerity to Allah? Is by worshipping Him in Him alone with Tawheed. And how do we have sincerity with the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? Is by following his sunnah alayhi afdal salatu wasalam. And how do we have sincerity to his book is by practicing his book, understanding his book, and contemplating his book, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we have sincerity to the leaders of the Muslims? By listening and obeying them in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Avoiding rebellion, avoid, avoiding revolt and protest. And how is it that we have nasiha, bainana? How do we have advice between us, or sincerity? By advising one another. So I wanted to make this small advice about the importance of ilm, of knowledge, and talk about some of the benefits of knowledge and some of the harms of knowledge, which we often don't talk about. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكِ قَالَ Imam Mujaddid رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى In his advice, from one of the imams of the sunnah about this topic, he said, اعلم رحمك الله أنه يجب علينا تعلم أربع مسائل الأولى العلم وهو معرفة الله ومعرفة النبي ومعرفة دين الإسلام بيد الله. He said, No, and may Allah have mercy upon you. That it is an obligation upon us to know four things. The first thing is ilm. And then he defined ilm. He said, وَهُوَ مَعْرَفَةُ اللَّهِ That it is knowing Allah. And knowing the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And knowing the religion of Islam with its textual proofs. And ilm, knowledge, as Ibn al-Qayyim said, and as before him, many of the Salaf 
related. What is ilm? What is knowledge? Are we talking about knowledge of being a muhandis, being an engineer? Or knowledge of being a doctor? Those are all beneficial things. We need that knowledge in our societies to build our communities. But the knowledge that the ulama are talking about, and especially the ulama of the salaf, the pious predecessors, was ilm al-nafiyah. Wa ilm al-nafiyah, it is qala Allah wa qala Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So ilm, knowledge, it is the path of Jannah. Knowledge is the path of Jannah. And this is why the Prophet alayhi afdal salatu wa salam said, مَنْ سَلَّكَ تَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمِسُهُ بِهِ عِلْمًا سَحَّلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ تَرِيكًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ The Prophet alayhi afdal salatu wa salam said, Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, then knowledge, then Allah will make easy for him the path of Jannah. The Salaf of this Ummah, they used to say about the one who seeks knowledge, Talib al-Ilm, Talib al-Jannah. That whoever seeks knowledge is seeking paradise because it takes ikhlas, it takes sincerity. And it takes practicing that knowledge. And it takes making da'wah to that knowledge. And it takes being patient on the harm of giving that knowledge. Maybe the people will reject you. Look at the NBA, a name after the Salatu Wasalam. They were, some of them were killed. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was stoned. They fought him. They poisoned him. Alayhi after the salatu wasalam. So it's a steep path. And that's why it's the path to Jannah. And knowledge, ayu al habba, it is a sign of khair. Seeking knowledge, and if Allah gives you something of that knowledge of His religion, that's a sign of khair that Allah wants good for you. How do we know this? We know this from the hadith of the Prophet alayhi after salatu wasalam, where he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, مَنْ يُرِدَ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يَفِقَهُ فِي الدِّينِ That whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him knowledge of the religion. The scholars, they say that the person who is not given knowledge, meaning the person they stay in their same state in Islam, He's been Muslim 20 years or Muslim all his life and he hasn't even tried to memorize one ayat or at least practice. He doesn't even really perform his salat uh, uh, properly because he doesn't go back to the knowledge on how to do those things. They said that the one who does not have some knowledge of his uh, his deen or, or learn knowledge of his religion, that Allah doesn't want khayr for him. That's a sign Allah doesn't want khayr for him. Or her. So we have to strive to better ourselves, better our Islam and our understanding of our Lord and how to worship Him. As I mentioned in the beginning, I said knowledge can also be harmful. So what am I talking about? How can knowledge, ilm, be harmful? Because the Prophet ﷺ used to supplicate for ilm and nafia. He used to supplicate, supplicate for beneficial knowledge. Letting us know that there is knowledge غير نافع. There is knowledge which is not beneficial. Knowledge of kufr. Knowledge of shirk. Knowledge of magic. Knowledge of, of how to do fornication and all of these things. That's not going to benefit you. And knowledge of philosophy. As the salaf of this ummah, they used to speak about Ahl Kalam, the people who uh, were into philosophy and, and all these ideologies because they formed their life their, their, their knowledge and, and their practice and their ideology and their understanding of the world based upon their desires, based upon only their experiences. They don't go back to the books, meaning the books of, 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 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, which Ahli Iman believes in. So this is why they used to hate this type of knowledge. That's knowledge, غير نافع. That's knowledge which has no benefit. And... Something else with knowledge, as far as it not being beneficial, is also we have to look to who we take our knowledge from. That's imperative. And that's from the Bab of Nasiha. I have to share this with my brothers and sisters because we don't hear this all the time. And in this day of eight, day and age with the internet, we have Sheikh Google making a fatwa here. And Sheikh Yahoo making fatwa here. And we go to this website and this website and the people come with questions and they have all kind of understanding of Islam. And we have people 
explaining the ahadith to the Prophet ﷺ based on their desire, saying they're metaphorical, or saying this or saying that. وَعِيَاذٌ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Leading us to the hellfire if we follow them. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, سَيُكُونَ فِي آخِرَ أُمَّتِي أُنَاسًا يُحَدِّثُونَكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَسْمَعُوا وَلَا أَبَاكُمْ وَلَا أَبَاكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ the Prophet alayhi afdal salatu wasalam said, there will be a people in the later part of my nation who will speak, of, that you will hear, that will speak about things that you didn't hear, that you've never heard of, nor did those, your fathers uh, hear about this. So, beware them and be, be cautious of this. That there are those who call to the hellfire. They don't call the kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's imperative that we take those principles in our life. That whenever you're listening to someone, and they're giving you fatwa, and they're giving you advice, ask them, who, gave, who preceded you in the statement? Because you perhaps could be taken from those people the Prophet alayhi after the salatu wa salam warned against. And that's why the Prophet, Imam Sirin, Ibn Sirin rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, in the Al-Madina, فَيَنْذُرُوا أَمَّا يَخْذُوا دِينَكُمْ He said, verily, knowledge is the religion, religion. So look to those you take your knowledge from. You have to know. You can't type in something and just get a fatwa from any website or any place and just follow it. Ask those people in your community who have knowledge who can guide you, the imams, those students of knowledge, those people who went away for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they sought that path, which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained for us. The Prophet Ali Abdul salatu wa said in a sahih hadith, khat, uh, oh, the, sahabi, the sahabi that narrated said, khatta lana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khattan. Fakal hadha sabil, hadha sabil Allah, ثُمَّ خَطَّ عَنْ يَمِينِهِ وَعَنْ شِمَالِهِ وَقَالْ هَذِهِ سُبُلْ عَلَى كُلُّ سُبِيلْ مِنْهَا شَيْطَانٍ يَدْعُوا إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ تِلَى قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَإِنَّ هَذِ السُّرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمٌ فَاعْتَبِيُوا وَلَا تَعْتَبِيُوا السُّبُلْ The Prophet alayhi after the salatu was salam, he drew a line in the dirt. He said that this is the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a straight path. Then he drew one on the right and he drew one on the left. He said those are the various paths. And on the head of each one of those paths is a shaitan calling you. And then the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam read the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily that is my path. So follow it and do not divide. Meaning that the surat al-mustaqim is the straight path. There's no shortcuts to Jannah. There's no shortcuts to success. We have to follow that same sabil. As Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala said, he said, what means? La yaslah akhri hadhi ummah illa bima salaha awalaha. That the, this nation, the later part of this nation will not be rectified except for that which rectified the beginning of it. Meaning that we have to follow Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. And the last aspect of knowledge I want to mention is the importance of sincerity which should be in the first. And as we all know, in order to have our deeds accepted we have to be sincere to Allah. And we have to follow the sunnah, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whatever we're doing. This hadith that I'm about to share with you, which is a hadith I hope some of us are familiar with, is a hadith which shows for us sincerity, the importance of sincerity. And it's a hadith which should strike fear in our hearts and lets us know that sometimes the deed of seeking knowledge and doing some of the greatest deeds in Islam can in, in fact end you in the hellfire. And at other times, they are the greatest deeds of Islam, and they can lead you to paradise. The same deeds. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in al-awwal al-nas yukda alayhi yawm al-qiyamati rajlin ustushida. 
فأتي به فعرفه نعمه فقال فما أملت فيها قال قتلت فيك حتى استشيت قال كذبت ولكنك فعلت ليقال هو جري فقد قيل ثم أمر به فصحب على وجهه حتى ألقي في النار The first person one of the first three of the three people brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in Sahih Muslim is a man that he fought for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was martyred and he will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asked about what did you do so what did you do for my sake he will say I fought until I was martyred and, the, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to, himself, to, say to him you lied كِذَّبْتْ وَلَكِنَّكَ What rather you, you did it so that the people would say that you're brave. And it was said about you. The thing is he got his reward in this dunya. It was said about him that he was brave. فَقَدْ قِيلْ ثُمَّ أُمِرَ بِهِ فَصُحِبَ الْوَجِيهِ حَتُّ الْكِفِ النَّارِ Then he will be dragged on the hellfire on his face. And we all think of the person, the people who are martyred as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them all throughout the Quran and all throughout the authentic sunnah. It's a high status. But this person will be in the fire because of his lack of sincerity. وَرَجِلٌ تَعَلَّمَ الْعِلْمِ وَعَلَّمَهُ وَقَرَى الْقُرْآنِ قَالْ فَمَا أَمَلْتَ فِيهَا قَالَ تَعَلَّمْتَ الْعِلْمِ وَعَلَّمْتَهُ وَقَرَاتَ فِيكَ الْقُرْآنِ وَقَرَاتُهُ فِيكَ الْقُرْآنِ قَالَ كَذَّابْتَ وَلَكِنَّكَ فَعَلْتَ لِيَقَالْ هُوَ عَالِمٌ وَقَرَأْتَ وَقَرَأْ لِيُقَالْ هُوَ قَارِئٌ فَقَدْ كِيلْ ثُمَّ أُمِرَ بِهِ فَصُحِبَ عَلَى وَجِهِ حَتَّى أُلْكِي فِي النَّارِ So the second man is the one who sought knowledge. As we said, have the path, that's the path of Jannah. This one sought knowledge. And he taught the people knowledge. And he read the Qur'an, he became proficient in the Qur'an. And the people praised him and loved him. That's Sheikh so and so. And he's such a beautiful reciter, so and so. So it was said about him. And Allah will say that he, he lied. You lied. But you did it so the people would praise you. And they did. And then he'll be dragged in the fire. And the third one is the man. The third one is the man who spent. He spent his money, built masajid, built places to seek the knowledge, built schools, Islamic schools, built all this khair. But he did it so that the people would say that he was a spendthrift or he was a uh, philanthropist. And it was said about him, and he'll be dragged in the fire. So that's a warning that those great deeds can either get us to paradise, that same act of seeking knowledge, if there's not ikhlas, there's not sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it could end us in the hellfire. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah azza wa jal. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And as we said, ayyuhallah habba. Looking to where you take your knowledge from is imperative. And I want to minbab and nasiha as, as advice for myself and my brothers and sisters in Islam remind us and tell us about some characteristics we have to be cautious of or some statements and things that we have to be cautious of because it's so common in the ummah. That if, for example, as I mentioned before, that you have to if you hear something strange, as the Prophet ﷺ said, then you should ask, where, who preceded you in that statement? Where did that statement come from? And as I said, there are some people, they explain the characteristics, the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ways that Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not leave them uh, the authority to do so. They explain it from their desires because they fear falling into explaining the text in its uh, proper form. So some of the people, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ 
Ar-Rahman ala Ars Istawa, that the most merciful rose above his throne, they say, no, 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 no. It means Estola. It means that Allah took it by force. Or it means such and such. And they do this in order to make it fit with their intellect. But I'm telling you, if you want any knowledge that's going to help you get to Jannah, go back to the Qur'an, go back to the Sunnah, go back to how the Sahaba understood it. They didn't ask and didn't make uh, various forms of misinterpretation and say that it was metaphorical, but they went back to those nasus and they accepted it. When the Prophet ﷺ said that uh, uh, Rabbuna tab- uh, the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night and asked the angels about who was supplicating and who was seeking forgiveness. Some of the people say that means his command uh, descends. Or it means such and such, it means such and such. But rather accept those nasus as Ahli Iman accepts those nasus. And beware of those people who call you to other than Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sabil of the early scholars, the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our e- evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Muslims everywhere. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina dhab al-nar. Rabbana la tazik qulubana ba'da dha daytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta wahab. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify the condition of the Muslims everywhere and forgive the Muslims everywhere, the living and the deceased amongst us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas with the bad al sunnah and nabi sallallahu and the Sabil of Mu'mineen, who sent Allah to Salam and the Nabi and the Muhammad, who are the Ali, 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 who are